Now, I'm going to cross to New Hampshire and catch up with Kristen Tate in just a moment to talk about the lack of reaction to the devastating fires that ravaged Hawaii by the lack of reaction by the president. Joe Biden's been lazing about on a beach while Hawaii burns, a kind of reverse of that controversy we had here a couple of years back. And the Veep, Kamala Harris, well, she spent the weekend at a $10,000 a head fundraiser in Martha's Vineyard, of course, the summer home of wealthy lefties. But first, Donald Trump's been indicted again, this time in Georgia, for allegedly trying to overturn his 2020 election loss. Kristen Tate's all over it. Yes, they are likely the most serious of charges leveled against the president. But I'll tell you what, Chris, if you walk around the street anywhere in the United States and ask any American what's going on with these indictments, they really won't be able to tell you much because the media has been, uh, you know, reporting breathlessly that they're going to get Trump now and the walls are closing in for years at this point. And everybody understands that these charges, all of them are so politicized. These in Georgia, these charges in Georgia are about Trump's attempts to overturn the election. And you read into the to the charges that are being made. And uh, it is just so clear that this is all about liberals trying to go after their political enemy, enemy number one, Donald Trump, and Americans are so tired of this. They have fatigue. People on both sides of the aisle have fatigue. And the reason you know that these are not successful attempts by the Democrats to take down their opponent is that Trump is surging in the polls, not just in the GOP primary polls where he's the clear front runner, but if you look at the general election polls, he is now about tied with Joe Biden. So, you know, the Democrats, they are just flailing. They don't know what to do. They've got a dud for a candidate, Joe Biden. And so this is their last ditch attempt to try to win the next election. And I've got to tell you, Chris, I just don't think this diversion is going to work electorally. Yeah, it doesn't seem unwise. It doesn't seem wise. It doesn't seem wise in political terms, but it doesn't seem wise for the American political system either to be running this stuff through uh, judicial or criminal processes when it really should be settled in the political sphere at the ballot box. So let's have a look at what Republican Ted Cruz has had to say about this today. I'm pissed. I'm pissed at these over and over and over again. If there are indictments tonight, it'll be the fourth indictment of Donald Trump. This is disgraceful. Our country is over 200 years old. We have never once indicted a former president or a candidate and a leading candidate for president. And this is Joe Biden and this is the Democrats weaponizing the justice system. The Texas Republican senator there, Ted Cruz. Uh, and this is not going to slow down Donald Trump's campaigning at all, is it, Kristen? Of course not. This is just going to make him more popular among his base. And I'm so glad to see Ted Cruz speaking like this, Chris, to have some anger, because this is how the American people feel. And Republicans in the in the spotlight, you know, these people in Washington, D.C., the Republicans, they don't fight for too long. They're just too scared to say anything about this or to actually defend Donald Trump. You know, they don't want to, you know, say anything too controversial. So a lot of people in the Beltway just keep their mouths shut and they don't reflect a lot of times in the media, these Republicans in the media, they don't reflect the anger that the American people have, especially conservative voters, over these ridiculous politicized charges by the Democrats. This is an attempt by the Democrats and the deep state and our two-tier justice system to take out the left's chief rival political opponent. That is what is going on. And everybody knows it. Now, Kristen, uh, those of us here in Australia have been looking on, and in New Zealand, of course, looking at the, the horrible wildfires uh, in Maui, uh, one of the large islands there of Hawaii, uh, a part of the world so many Australians know well. Just terrible bushfires there. 99 deaths confirmed so far. Expected, of course, to be more revealed in coming days. The pictures of the devastation there are just shocking. These are the sorts of scenes Australians know all too well. But... Extraordinarily, we've seen pictures over the weekend, too, of your president, Joe Biden, uh, sitting it out uh, over the weekend at the beach yet again. And have a listen to this. This is when he arrives back at the White House after his weekend at the beach. He hasn't even got anything to say about Hawaii. Kristen, how on earth could a president not be talking about this national natural disaster? 
it's a complete disgrace, of course, but this is what we've come to expect for Joe Biden. And this is exactly what happens when you have a politicized media that essentially works for one party. At this point in this country, the, the mainstream media is just an arm of the Democratic Party. And a couple of weeks from now, the media won't even be reporting on this at all. Everyone will have forgotten it, except for these poor people in Hawaii. Uh, but you know what's really interesting about this, Chris, is, is despite how horrific and and just disgraceful joe biden is acting in light of this disaster i don't think it will change much for him electorally because the democrats core base have proven over and over again that they will vote for anybody as long as they have a d next to their name i mean we saw a few years ago they voted for a stroke victim who could not even uh, utter a full sentence of english john fetterman in pennsylvania over a world-class surgeon who is running against him in that senate race so i don't suspect that his disastrous response to this tragedy is going to change much in terms of the election. But yes, it's a it's a disgrace and we're all embarrassed of our president. Well, it's just extraordinary to see, Kristen. It's absolutely extraordinary because this is a massive natural disaster. This is a nation in mourning and still trying to deal with the fallout from this, of course, a major recovery operation underway. It seems to me just unthinkable that a present president hasn't spoken about it. We know that he never went to that train site in Ohio, I think it was, where there was that horrible crash and fire and chemical spill. He said he'd turn up there. He never did. But this is of a a whole new dimension, whole whole towns wiped out and, and, and almost 100, almost certainly more than 100 people killed. Uh, surely he'll be pressured into speaking about this, reacting to this, and at the very least visiting Hawaii. I, one would certainly think so. I mean, this is the, the empathetic president we were promised. This is what he ran on, being a man of empathy, a man of the American people who can bring us all together. And instead, he's been a complete disgrace. He is lazy. He is selfish. He does not want to be bothered uh, with questions about this horrific tragedy. Uh, but who knows? Maybe the media will eventually pressure him enough that he'll have to uh, actually show up and and make a visit there and, and say some words. But I don't have a lot of hope in our media at this point. Understandably, Kristen. Thanks so much for joining us again, Kristen Tate. Always good to catch up with you. Thanks as always, Chris.